Good evening. This is Two Wolves reminding us all that we are all related, especially when stories like this come to the fore. We are all related. And this is the evening of 29 March, Good Friday. I'm going to show you several links as quickly as I can, and I want to say something before I go on. For years, those of us who had lived along the coast, or still do, just assumed that the greatest threat would come from the sea, that tsunamis would cause, or excuse me, that earthquakes would cause tsunamis, Cascadia fault, earthquake, tsunami, which would then cause all our bluffs to slip and our homes to go into the sea, among other things. Okay, there's works in reverse. It's also possible there is a potential for collapsing bluffs to cause a tsunami. People in Port Townsend have been concerned about this for a long time now, and I will show you some an article with empirical evidence to that effect. Collapsing bluffs can cause an inundating tsunami. Starting here with www.king5.com, the landslide danger is not limited to Woodby Island, although it has, seems to have stopped. The Earth seems to have stopped moving there for the moment. Again, here's a video you can come to. A little different video tonight. King 5 News. From yesterday, actually. Coopville, Washington. Residents affected by the quarter-mile landslide on Whidbey Island attended a community meeting Thursday night. They asked county leaders questions about a wide range of concerns from the cause of the landslide to curious onlookers and looters getting too close to the neighborhood. It is likely months before Whidbey slide victims can return home. That's months. Here's some more photos you can come to. Tragedy in this beautiful place. Thankfully, no lives lost. As far as protecting the properties, the Public Works Department posted local access only signs. Island County Sheriff's Office will be monitoring the area to keep extra traffic out. It will be months before some people will have full access to their homes following Wednesday's landslide. Firefighters said Thursday, four homes are being yellow tagged, which means the owners will have limited access. And mind you, insurance does not cover this type of natural disaster. The Washington State Department of Natural Resources said when geologists mapped this area of Whidbey in 2005, it was marked as a historically deep-seated landslide. They also said the landslide might have started moving in 2002, maybe even earlier. Oh, I'm calling BS on that. Because I just received a PM, and you can find it on my earlier video that I made two days ago. Someone from Whidbey is talking about similar slides happening this year on South Whidbey. Okay? And I'm going to show you something else. This is an ongoing issue. This is not something that initiated in 2002. Uh, one poor soul. I used to say in a million years we'll have waterfront property, and now I can say a hundred years or tomorrow. It's unbelievable, said Nancy Skel Skullerud. The slide in the Ledgewood neighborhood obliterated, obliterated the hillside at about 3.45 a.m. Wednesday. Washington DNR said the landslide displaced approximately 5.3 million square earth feet of earth. No one was injured, thankfully. Geologists are still working to determine what triggered the landslide. Okay. During the 1996-97 storms, a home was destroyed just north of the current slide. According to the DNR, well, our climate, topography, and geology create a perfect setting for landslides. There's more to that than this. I'm going to show you Pacific Northwest Seismic Network in just a moment. Skullerid also said it's taken a while to soak it in to realize that life changes in five minutes. Mother Nature Always Wins by King Fives Eric Wilkinson, Natalie Swaby, and Angela King. That's my salient point tonight. Mother Nature Always Wins. Now to Squim. Squim, as you'll remember, we come here a lot, Peninsula Daily News. Squim, situated between Port Townsend and Port Angeles. It's where I used to live. And Squim sits facing the Strait of Juan de Fuca. This article from earlier this year. Peninsula Daily News by Rob Olekinen. Squim. When Roger Huntman heard the rumbling beneath his feet, he knew it was time to run. 
Standing near the edge of a bluff overlooking, overlooking the street of Juan de Fuca, Huntman got out of the way before a section of his lawn calved like a glacier. I wish that I had the picture here. I, I don't. But this is happening now. I want you to know. What did I tell you? The geology is the same around the street of Juan de Fuca. So now this is Squim. If I didn't run approximately 40 feet, I would have gone down with it, said Huntman, who lives in the Montero subdivision northwest of Squim. That's out toward the Dungeness Spit. Over the course of about three hours on the morning of February 1, not long ago, a 150-foot section of the bluff moved about 40 feet closer to a row of homes on 100 block of Cypress Circle. Several trees, lawn ornaments, benches, plants, and an erosion warning sign fell onto the beach below. Actually, I've stood there. I, I have a photo somewhere in my collection. I've been on Montera about a year ago, and I stood where that erosion warning sign fell onto the beach. Holy. No homes were lost or damaged. It looks like the roost is over, knock on wood, Huntman said Thursday. Clallam County Fire District Number 3 and Sheriff's Office block dock sections of the unstable bluff with yellow caution tape. County Engineering said you need to get a geologist, said Earl MacDonald, who lives one house east of Roger and Virginia Huntman. We were saying we need to move. I agree that you need to move. Leon Smith, Clallam County Building, well, you know, they don't want to alarm anybody. Clallam County building official and fire marshal said a geotechnical report of the slide area shows the slope is stabilized and, quote, no homes are at risk. So this is a very interesting article, and there's a few more that are very recent. When the slide began, McDonald grabbed his camera to snap some frames. Over the course of the next three hours, a little would go here, a little would go there, he recalled. It kind of danced back and forth. At one point, a whole big section went to the west of me. Huntman had been standing on the large section that calved into the strait. And mind you, that's hundreds of feet down. Hundreds of feet down into the strait of Juan de Fuca. He was hemming it up, McDonald said. A few frames later, where he was standing, it wasn't there anymore. It was just the weirdest thing I've ever seen, said Judy Rich, who lives to the west of the slide. Dave Hanna, civil engineer with Northwestern Territories Incorporated in Port Angeles, said the bluffs from Morse Creek to the Dungeness Recreation Area are slowly eroding back. Actually, it's not slowly, folks. It's happening very fast. I've watched it. Bluffs erode all through the North Olympic Peninsula. In January 29, part of a bluff above Water Street in Port Townsend collapsed. Okay, now, the concern in Port Townsend, and it's been voiced in the last two years, is that these bluffs, which are just like the ones on Whitby, and they're made of clay, if a large enough piece calves into the Admiralty Inlet, it could cause a tsunami, which could inundate downtown. And just to prove that, I'm coming to mtvewater.com hazard and so on. I'll put the links below. This is a very large document produced by government just dealing with the many, many faults in this region. Earthquakes could also lead to landslide-induced tsunamis, the location and extent of which are described below. Earthquakes could lead to landslide-induced tsunamis. Okay, but landslides can also induce tsunamis. You get my point, eh? Mother Nature always wins. The article, this is page four of an extensive document. I'll give you the link. Landslide source. Samaria landslides can occur on most bluffs throughout the coastal regions of Pierce County, and this would also be, of course, Island County, Jefferson County, Clallam County, Vancouver Island, and elsewhere in that region, okay, including the islands in the peninsula. Delta failure landslides can originate on the delta slopes of major rivers flowing into the sound. In Pierce County, this has happened primarily on the Puyallup River Delta leading into Commencement Bay. Either of these instances can induce a tsunami. I, okay? Can induce a tsunami. So we'll go one more place. Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. 
earthquake map. That's just to prove my point. So we're dealing with a multifaceted potential disaster here. Again, earthquakes from the Cascadia and such leading to a tsunami that collapse bluffs and homes or seismically induced, probably, movement of bluffs can fall into the water and pitch off a resultant tsunami, which can inundate lower-lying places like Port Townsend. Just for your uh, edification, Vancouver Island, Victoria, Vancouver, which this whole south Vancouver faces the same type of geological concerns. Bellingham, Everett, Seattle, Tacoma, and this right here, this would be island, this would be island, and this is of course the peninsula, and that would be Squim, Strait of Juan de Fuca. Of course, we're looking at recent earthquakes. Recent earthquakes in the last two weeks, and everything in light yellow has been in the last two or three days, and this is would be island. Think about the timing. I'll leave it with our friends to deduce even further from this, but I think we're looking at a much larger scenario than officials are telling us. Prayers again to all in the region, and thank you for listening to Wolves Out.